Welcome to part 5, creating visual movie effects in Blender. In this video, I'll be talking about camera stabilization. So, in this video, I'll be taking some shaky handheld footage and stabilizing it in Blender. For this video, I'll be using some footage that I shot just a few nights ago at a local firework celebration in my hometown. I was just sitting on the grass lawn uh, in front of a building and I was filming the fireworks just on my cell phone. Um, so the footage is quite grainy and it's shaky because my camera doesn't have um, optical image stabilization. We're going to stabilize this out. Let's go ahead and close the preview and jump back into Blender. Now, if you watched my last video in part 4, we looked at corner pinning. So we corner pinned a video onto my laptop screen. You'll know what tracking is, but you'll also know that Blender works a lot better with a sequence of still images rather than a movie file. Even if you get away with using a movie file, you will run into problems eventually if you try tracking with uh, a video file and not still images. Let's go ahead and convert the first 250 frames of my video into a sequence of images. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it, and I'll change this large window type from a 3D viewport to a node editor window, and I'll click on the compositing nodes button because we're using compositing nodes here, and I'll click on use nodes, and it gives us a few nodes, render layers and composite. You can left click to drag these around. I don't want render layers, so I'll click on it, and I'll press X on my keyboard to get rid of it. I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna bring in an input um, movie clip. Let's go ahead and put that there. I'll left click and drag to connect the image output port. Uh, to the composite input port, and I'll go ahead and open my video, which is on my desktop. Uh, there it is right there. Now, my footage was shot uh, on my cell phone in 4K, which means it's not 1920 by 1080. This is my properties window over here, and under my camera tab, this is where I'm gonna set my output dimensions and resolution and folder and file type. Um, I'll change this 50% up to 100% so you can see what I mean. If I render out one frame, you'll see that it's cropped. I'm losing quite a bit of the edges of the video because it's taking that original 4K video and just cropping off the edges so that the middle of that video is in this 1920 by 1080 frame. I'll press escape. What I have to do here is I have to scale down this video to fit to this render size, or I can turn this render size up. I'll scale it down. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to bring in a distort scale node. Um, so I'll click there and I'll drag it or just click when it's over top of this noodle to insert it in the middle of the noodle. And I'm gonna scale it down, not relative, I don't wanna scale it manually, I'll just scale it down to the render size. So it's taking that movie clip, scaling it down, and now we can render it out. I'm gonna render out um, not to PNG images under the output section, I'll change my file format type to just JPEGs. JPEGs are fine for this video, especially because it's grainy and shot with a cell phone, and at 90% that's fine. I'm gonna to output to a folder on my desktop that I'm gonna create, so not in this temp. I'll click on this little folder icon, I'll go to my desktop, and I'm going to make a new folder by clicking on this little folder, a button with a star on it, and I'm going to type in um, fireworks-footage, and I'll press enter, and I'll double click to go in that folder. So I'm here. I'm not going to give my images a file name because Blender will do that for me. It'll put like 0001.jpg, and then each frame will get numbered sequentially. So I'll click on accept. And I think I'm good. Let's go ahead and click on animation. I'll speed this part of the video up uh, just for the sake of this video. All right, so it took a few minutes to process out that video, mainly because I have to scale down all the 4K frames into uh, 1080p images. So let's go ahead and press escape on our keyboard with our mouse in that area to go back to our node editor window. It's at this point that I need to do some tracking in the movie clip editor window. So I'm gonna grab this little crosshatch area and drag it over to the left to split the window into two. And I'll change this new window type from a node editor window into a movie clip editor window. Now, in this Blender file, I've already opened up that original source footage, but I'm actually gonna open up that sequence of images now. So I'll click on Open, I'll go to my desktop, and in that Fireworks footage folder, um, I'll press A on my keyboard uh, to make sure they're all selected, and I'll click on Open Clip. And again, because these numbers are numbered sequentially, Blender knows that this is a clip, like a movie clip. Let's go ahead and click on Open Clip, 
and if I scrub through in my timeline, it'll show me the footage, the original footage, just 250 frames. I'm going to make this a little bit wider because now we have to decide on a few points to track in this video. When you track, you're basically telling Blender to follow the movement of a little square of the image that you are defining. In this case, the footage is very dark, and so there's only a few points that I might want to track here. I am actually going to track that little tiny lamp light there because it's bright and everything around it is pretty dark. So I'll zoom in on it and kind of pan around so I can see it. I'm going to hold control down on my keyboard and left click. I'm in tracking mode right now of this window and not mask mode. That's important. So I'll hold control down on my keyboard and I'll left click to place the tracking marker. Now this tracking marker is quite large. I'll press S to scale it down and move my mouse. Um, I don't want it to take up the entire uh, marker like that. There's no contrast there. So I'm going to scale it out just so I can see some black or dark around the light circle. I want to see the area in which this tracker will search in each new frame. Right now I'm on frame 103 for some reason. Um, if I go over here to my properties panel, and if you can't see that, you can click on N on your keyboard or this little plus. Under marker display, I want to see the search area because it's quite small. This tracker is quite small itself, but if the uh, camera shake goes larger than this square, the tracker will not be able to find itself uh, in the next frame. So I'm going to drag this little corner uh, to make the search area quite a bit bigger. But of course, if you do that for every single marker, your tracking will go slower. So just be warned about that. It has to search for a larger area now. Let's go ahead and do some tracking. I'm going to change one thing though. Over here in the tool shelf of this window, under the track tab, um, right now it's looking for this keyframe that I have set manually at frame 103 of where this uh, light is almost perfectly round. Uh, but later on, when this light is moving around, because of motion blur, it might get to be quite a bit of a streak. And so I don't want to match my tracking to this circle every single time, this keyframe. I'm going to change the match to previous frame. And that means that as that circle changes and it tracks the next frame, it'll just look for the previous frame's version uh, in that new frame, and then so on and so forth. I'm actually going to press S to make this a little bit bigger, so in case it stretches into a streak, um, it'll still track and won't get lost. Let's go ahead and track backwards now. So I'll just try one frame at a time. Before I do that though, I'm going to click on Prefetch. So it actually loads all those images into Blender's memory. So Prefetch, and as you can see, now that uh, purple bar is full. And I'll click on the Track Back One Frame button, and it's tracking quite well. I'll click on Track all the way to the beginning. It got lost at frame 42, so I'll have to manually set a keyframe. I'll put that little crosshair right in the middle, and I'll keep on tracking. It got to frame 8, it got lost, so I'll manually press G, put it back in the middle, and I'll go back to the beginning, hopefully. Yeah, it got to frame 1. Let's go ahead and now and jump back to 103, and let's track forward now, just one frame at a time to start, and then I'll track all the way through. It got to frame 214. I'll set this manually now. Oops, I actually pressed F on my keyboard. And F, if you're zoomed in, zooms all the way out. It fills uh, your video window, I guess, or the window with the footage. Um, let's go ahead and press G to put that in the right spot. And I'll keep tracking. OK, let's press G. And as you can see, because there is motion blur, I have to set a few manual points, and that's quite common. There we go, I'm at frame 250. Let's go ahead and scrub through. I'll zoom out first though. I'm watching this area and this area to make sure that it's not sliding at all, or we're not it's not jumping over to a different light in the scene, uh, and then jumping back at any time. Uh, that would cause things to go awry. Great, so it's at this point that I can do single point stabilization. And what that means is that it's only going to stabilize the footage's movement. So what I'll do is on the properties panel, I'll go down to 2D stabilization and I'll check that checkbox and I'll open that section up. Um, it's in here that I can add tracking points that I've already made and tracked to this section and it'll use those points and keep them perfectly still in the video. So I'm actually going to name this tracking point first. I'll scroll up and under track with this tracking marker selected. I'm going to call this one tracker.far because it's far away. 
And now under the 2D stabilization section, I'll click on plus with that tracker selected and it'll add that tracker um, to this list. If I scrub around now in my timeline, it doesn't look like anything's happened. And that's because we actually need to display stabilization, which is up here under display. So if I check that box, you're actually gonna see where the footage is as opposed to the video's frame. If I uncheck it, you'll see that the footage moves when I check it, and that's because as this point is being locked to the exact same point in your video, the footage itself has to move around to keep that point right in the same spot. Which means that if your footage is not larger, it actually gets black or you'll actually lose some points in the video where you'll actually see nothing on the edge of the video. So if I scrub around to so see the video moves around, you know, a fair amount. But in points like this, it's important that we click on Auto Scale under 2D Stabilization, and that will scale the video up so we don't have anything else showing up in our render. This black area is where the render will actually be, and this dotted line represents where the footage is moving around. So I'll click on Auto Scale. That scales the footage up, which means you lose some of the edge of the video, uh, but that's just part of stabilization. So as you can see now, um, as we can see the video, it's very, very, very stable. Now, it's at this point that I need to mention that you might not want to stabilize your footage perfectly. And the reason for that is because you have motion blur. In my case, I have motion blur. If you don't have any motion blur, you could leave this location influence at one to keep your marker perfectly still. But in my case, my marker is stretching and looking like it has motion blur, as does the rest of my footage. So you can imagine if your footage is perfectly still and there's no camera shake, yet your footage is blurring in a directional blur uh, just once in a while, it'll look very, very weird. So I'm gonna change this location influence down to 0 0.8 and that will leave some camera shake um, in your video, which is what you probably want. But just for the sake of this video, I'll turn that up to one again to get no camera shake. So that's single point stabilization. That will get rid of the movement camera shake in your video. But what about rotation? Yes, part of camera shake is that your camera actually rotates as you're holding it, and that is not yet fixed in this video. So as you can kind of see that totem pole in front of the fireworks, is still rotating around. So to solve that, you need a second tracking point. So I'm gonna go ahead and track another point. I'm gonna track this lamppost here. So I'll hold control and I'll left click to put a tracking marker. I'll scale it up a little bit. I'll scale up the search area. And I'm gonna go ahead and track one frame back at a time. And I'll track all the way to the beginning. Great, it went all the way back to the beginning quite quickly. And let's go back to frame 92, my keyframe, and I'll track forward now. And it didn't have any problems. I'll just scrub around to make sure, while looking in this little preview window, that it didn't slide around at all. And you can see that it does blur at some points because of the motion blur. Like, it gets quite narrow and, and, and skinny at some points, but uh, it should work. So again, in the Properties panel, I'm going to name this marker. Right now it's just called Track. I'm going to call this tracker.left. Sure, we have tracker.far and tracker.left. Under 2D stabilization, I'm going to add stabilized rotation. And that requires a different point than your original point. And so I'll click here. I'm going to select tracker.left. So now it's going to use this tracker and the original one to rotate your footage to keep it stable. Again, you can change the amount of influence here. If you want some rotation in your footage, you can turn it down. I'll leave it at one. And now if I press Alt-A or play, you'll see that the, or if I just scrub through rather, you'll see that the footage is very, very stable. In fact, too stable for the amount of camera blur that I have. Great, it's now that I wanna render this out and I wanna make sure that the stabilization actually works in the rendering. So I'm gonna go back over to this node editor window where I have my original movie clip, the scale to fit 1080p, and the composite. I don't wanna use this original movie clip though, I wanna use my image sequence, so I'll change right here from my original footage to 001.jpg, and I still want scale, even though the footage is 1080p, I'll just leave it there. It's at this point that I need to use a new node, so I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to Distort, and it's called Stabilize 2D. I'll add that new node in the middle of this noodle, 
and I have to select the footage that my stabilization is referring to. So in this case, I'll click on this little uh, film strip icon and select 001.jpg, and it's all good and ready to go. If I want to preview it, of course, I can add a viewer. I'll press Shift A. I'll go to Output Viewer. I'll add that node there. I'll press Shift A. I'll add a Layout Reroute node, which is just a little dot. I'll drag that by right-clicking and dragging and putting it in the middle of that noodle, and I'll drag that to make a split, and I'll click on Backdrop so you can see how it's going to look. If I scrub through, you'll see that now the footage is perfectly stable. The last thing I'll do is I'll render that out to a video file so you can see it. Let's go ahead and change the output type from JPEG to H.264 and my encoding from AVI to MPEG4, that's the wrapper. I'll change the output location just to my desktop and I'll call this one fireworks-stabilized uh, and I'll click on accept and I'll render this out. So I'll click on animation. All right, so finish rendering out all of those frames to a video file. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you change the location influence down from one or the rotation influence down from one, you might be cropping too much of your video. If I turn location influence down to 0 0.5 and the same thing with rotation influence, I'm now cropping off way too much of my video, uh, perhaps. So what I might want to do is I might want to change the scale influence so that it's not cropping off too much of my video. I might want to pull this value down from one to make the amount of scaling up smaller. But I will want to make sure that that little dashed line never actually creeps into the video frame. In this case, it did a little bit. If I scrub through, yes, it kind of pokes through right there. So I want to scale that up a little bit like that and just make sure that never ever happens. Um, you don't want to crop too much of your video, of course. I'll turn it up a little bit more, in fact. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the footage that I rendered out. So I'll go to my desktop and let's take a look. And as you can see, the footage is now very, very still. Um, and because of that, you'll see at some points in this video that it just sort of blurs inexplicably. So that's sort of the downfall of stabilizing 100%. That will be it for this video. What I'll do in the last part is I will go back to Blender and I'll put the nodes up on the screen again so you can see them. I'll press Escape in there and I'll zoom out. There we go. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click on subscribe to see more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.